come to Ghana, as it were, to seek to levy the money against his property or his assets. I doubt there is any opportunity for them to do that. So they've, they've handed him the ultimate. Um, it is as though um, you were standing trial for, for murder and you would look towards, you know, either being uh, put in prison for life or either being put in prison or being uh, sentenced, row, sentenced to be hanged. Mm -hmm. uh, in that respect, if you are being asked to pay money, in addition to suffering that kind of sentence, I doubt you want to waste your money. Okay. <laughs> I'd rather leave it to my yeah. children. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now to the critical question that a lot of Ghanaians had been asking. As soon as FIFA heard of this, there was a 90-day ban, there was an investigation, we saw swift action. In the case of Ghana's laws, people are saying, and, and I just saw a headline, we could not find enough evidence to pin him with. Are we being lethargic as a nation? And, and who is it that says we couldn't find uh, enough evidence to pin him with? Who is saying that? Um, I... <coughs> hmm. You know, we have, we have sought to urge all of us to, to act cautiously and not to be overly expectant of, of any heavy criminal process as far as this thing is concerned. But, you know, people sometimes do just don't want to listen because they have seen a video of a man who is, as it were, boasting of his abilities to do one thing or the other because of his alleged connections to uh, the corridors of power and also suggesting that you know certain amount of money if they were they, they were giving you know they were able to secure certain things um, I mean going through the laws the criminal laws of Ghana I clearly cannot find any crime in that kind of talk okay <laughs> I clearly cannot find any crime in that kind of talk. Um, there are the, I may not say ancillary, but the connected issues of his conversations and the, the revelations in the video and Anas subsequently also informing us of his dealings and connections with certain companies which suggested some level of potential money laundering. Um, in that regard, I say, uh, when the investigators are done with their job, they may point us to certain crimes or alleged crimes uh, in that regard. Beyond that, all the things that you heard him say that got you angry, that made you felt embarrassed, uh, made you feel embarrassed, they are just what they are. I, I cannot find the crimes in them. You mean statements um, like, if you give me this amount of money, I can get you a meeting with this person, I can get you a contract. Including him receiving some money and putting in his box. Mm. I cannot see the crime. The, the point is that, look, a criminal law, uh, let's say, may be funny. Um, people have a feeling that, oh, we have seen him taking money and putting it in a bag. <laughs> so... He's guilty of a crime. It's unfortunate. Article 19 of the Constitution of Ghana is what guides us to determine what constitutes a crime. It says that a crime ought to be uh, stated in black and white in a law, and the sanctions for it must also be prescribed. So once there is no law, that says that, you know, an activity you have done is a criminal offense. It is not. Samson, let's take this final route on this matter. It is not. Yes. You see, mm. and there, there are aspects that people may want to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Our laws are territorially limited. Even granted that from what is being perused, if there is cogent evidence that meet the asset test to be able to to found a criminal charge and to sustain sin during prosecution. The question to ask is, what is the territory under which that activity said to be crime took place? Okay? There are questions that ought to be answered because the law does not allow some of them at a certain degree unless 
you wear the hat of a certain public officer. Okay. Which public officer would this be? Um, the, the law is very clear. I, I, okay. I, I wish we could read it back. Okay. But, um, if you were, for example, acting in the name of Ghana, representing Ghana, uh, you were maybe a representative in another country. That is when your actions in another jurisdiction can exactly. be uh, tried here. And, and in that jurisdiction, what you are doing, is it a crime to start with? Mm -hmm. So there are a number of questions that ought to be asked. And if the answers, you know, seem to point to the negative, in respect of Kwesi uh, Nyantechi, what I have seen, most of the answers as to whether or not a crime has been committed and there ought to be, uh, he ought to be liable to prosecution. I find them, um, I draw the negative on most of them. To make it uh, clear for our listeners, yeah. something, I'll crave your indulgence. Let's use the last two minutes of this leg of the discussion mm -hmm. to do this. We've both watched the documentary. Many Ghanaians have. Mm -hmm. So let's go through some of the uh, actions that have uh, caused the loudest cry, and then we will evaluate them. Of course, you are the professional here. In the first place, Mr. Nyantechi met with um, these persons, and he told them that there is a sponsorship deal available. Mm -hmm. He is setting up his a company, and we saw in the later um, right. correspondence that right. he's setting up a company. This company will bring the deal to the GFA and be act as an agent, which is not supposed to happen by FIFA laws. Right. Is this is this um, criminal in 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 our in our statutes? In our statutes, I cannot see the crime in that conflict of interest. Um, conflict of interest. Who is he dealing with? The country where he's dealing with and FIFA's laws clearly prohibit what he has done. The FIFA's laws clearly pro prohibit what he has done. Yeah. And so FIFA has dealt with him according to their, their, their rules. Their rules are rules of ethics. So it is, it is much a question of ethical conduct. It is much a question of impropriety. Questions of morality, ethical conduct, may not necessarily be criminal. So what he has done, FIFA's processes are not criminal processes. FIFA's processes are what you may call what is based on the standard of, you know, uh, balance of probabilities. They are not uh, processes that require to prove something beyond, beyond reasonable, reasonable doubt. doubt. And therefore, it is possible for what to have happened to happen. What it would be the conflict like of interest test in your, here? You being in, your in, in this business, mm -hmm. you have your code of uh, ethics and discipline within this company. Mm -hmm. um, if you offend, you could be punished. Mm -hmm. And some of the offenses are not criminal offenses. So you may suffer a suspension for having done one thing or the other. You may suffer a suspension for having... Uh, Maybe gotten spoken, the headline wrong. Right. Or, or spoken, spoken in out a of way ten. that you don't have to do. Exactly. You may get a suspension. You may be denied your salary for that because your rules say so. It will not be criminal. It will not be something that anybody in this institution can make a complaint to the police and have you prosecuted for. So with conflict so, of interest, what would be that... that uh, what would have made it a crime? What would be that test that would have made Mr. Yantichi liable to criminal prosecution? Okay, so somebody says he was getting into a, a business transaction with yeah. him. Yeah. The person must show that in that process, he may have defrauded him. How much did he defraud him of? Um, that can be a clear example where you have defrauded somebody. Then he could be prosecuted on that, on that leg. Um, Beyond some of those things, and, and again, when you begin to speak about some of these matters, people say you may have a certain, you know, uh, dislike for the methods that Anas uses. Some of his methods, when I'm wearing my journalistic hat, uh, Good Governance and Rights Activist Act, I, I, I support him wholeheartedly. But again, when I'm dealing with the law, I find problems with some of the, the processes that he takes. So that um, if, I have said before, if one is not in a process of committing a crime, 
and you catch him committing the crime, but you bait them, okay? You bait them and, and sort of deceive them to make certain pronouncements in, in suggesting that they are capable of doing one thing or the other for you you may not be standing on a strong legal footing. But that's debatable. A lot of different opinions have come up about that. Yeah, there, there are different opinions, but the opinions will be rested at the court. Okay. And the courts have made categorical pronouncements on some of these uh, uh, conducts, such that even at the level of the Supreme Court, if... I invaded the privacy of your correspondence and communication in a manner that is against the Constitution. The Constitution in Article 18 provides that the privacy of your communication and correspondence is, 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 uh, is not to be invaded by anybody, interfered by anybody. But there are grounds on which it can be interfered. If it is to prevent crime, for example, and I interfere in that process, I am doing the right thing. And the law says that kind of evidence will be admitted in court. But if that is not the purpose, and if I'm not empowered properly to do so and I did it, it will not be admitted in court. The court has shut down some of that in, in, at the level of the Supreme Court mm. so that the evidence is not admissible at all. Otherwise, we'll live in a society where we'll engage in pure blackmail and, and, and use them as basis of fighting, fighting our people we don't like in the name of fighting crime. Finally, Samson, yeah. you were mentioning that there may be some money laundering considerations that we could make yep. um, in a minute. Uh, bring that to us. Okay. So you discover where he talks about setting up a company and the manner in which the transaction is supposed to be conducted, conducted through a certain named businesses. The question to ask is, the investigators, if they have gone through the process of investigating this, would they have come to a conclusion that he has done such previous you know, transactions and done them through these companies? And what are the tax obligations that have been fulfilled, for example? And if it is clear that monies have been shipped in the manner that breaches the Money Laundering Act and they have gotten into these companies, clearly um, there would be a question to answer. But you know what? The, the, the accusations, including that the Attorney General is not prosecuting him, are unfounded. The Attorney General is not an investigating authority. The Attorney General receives the, the dockets from investigators, from police, from Yoko, from special prosecutor, maybe, maybe from special prosecutor, but not yeah. exactly. Yeah. And then we'll review them and give an opinion that the evidence so produced will lead to one conclusion, particularly that in the criminal prosecution, you ought to prove one's guilt beyond reasonable doubt. The law says, and as the Supreme Court has said, where there is a scintilla of doubt, a, a small doubt, that does not um, inure to proving your case properly. It must inure to the benefit of the person who is accused. And therefore, they ought to walk. And at an attorney general, will need those, all of that investigation done and done well mm. and then be sure that what they have is something that can found, you know, um, a conviction. Okay. Otherwise, they wouldn't want to put their foot in court and make a mess of themselves. And just to end that, uh, Gloria Kufu, our Attorney General, said on the 31st of August 2018, I'm reading from a Ghana web publication, I have not received any dockets for prosecution. It will be recalled that when the issue started, the CID started a probe. The, the probe is still ongoing, and when they forward anything to me, I will look at it. This right, is that's, that's, that's her, her domain. If she receives the docket, she's duty-bound to review it, and upon her review, makes a determination that there's a case. 
and that there is sufficient evidence. The point is sufficient evidence that will lead to proving the guilt of the accused person beyond reasonable doubt. And I just said, according to law, where there is the slightest of doubt in your ability to prove, it should inure to the benefit of the person who has been accused. Okay. Because by law, the person who is accused is, is entitled to sit in the court and not to say a word. Because our jurisprudence is that, unlike the civil jurisprudence that ap uh, applies to the French francophone countries and, and, and French you know, speaking people, you must prove his guilt beyond reasonable, reasonable doubt. doubt. If you don't mm. discharge that burden, the person cannot be, you know, as it were, mm. found guilty. So I, I guess we should be asking now what Anas may have supplied. Um, those who may have received it. We understand Yoko received some. The special prosecutor may have also received some of that. What further investigations may have revealed? We should be asking them the questions. They okay. should show us whether or not there are investigations. There was need for further investigations. Okay. And what the further investigations have, have concluded on. Mm. Otherwise, what you just saw on that footage and the pronouncements of the man on that footage, I can say that a thousand times, are not matters that will constitute a criminal prosecution. Not even defrauding by false pretenses, which is what defrauding the president... who? Mm, okay. And doing so under in which territory? And by the territorial application of the law, is he liable? All right. I mean, we should look at all of these things. Okay, so we will be speaking with the lawyer for Anas Arime or Anas himself. He'll be answering that question for us, those questions you have raised. What did he present to government? Right. What further investigations have been ongoing? Okay, he may not be able to tell us, but in his liaison with government, from his understanding. And we can also ask what his expectation was, because Anas brought this to a conclusion, I'm sure, not just for FIFA's purposes. I've what was his expectation? Say, um, mm. We heard him damaging the image of the president and damaging the image of the country. Sorry, that is not a criminal offense. Samson, hold, hold on for me for a moment. Lawyer Kisei Jabing has joined me on the line. Uh, Mr. Kisei Jabing, thanks very much for your time. Thanks for having me. So what was presented in terms of evidence to um, government? We know a lot was presented, but in a gamut, what did we give government? We gave, we gave government all that we gave to FIFA. Every single thing. So all the uh, institutions, Attorney General, uh, Office of the Special Prosecutor, the Economic and Organized Crime Office, all that, and then the Financial Intelligence. Do you agree that with what was seen on the tape and the extra evidence, well, we don't know the extra evidence that was given, but with what was seen on the tape, it would be difficult to make a criminal case considering the fact that we have to um, approve beyond reasonable doubt in these charges. I'm not the one to determine someone's criminal liability or otherwise. I mean, it's for the state institutions to go through what was given to them and come to a conclusion or otherwise. But as for beyond reasonable doubt, say, what do you need more than a person who is seen on tape doing this or that. He wants God himself to come down to tell you that this is what he, he did. Unless you're saying that the video evidence was dreamed of, it wasn't there, it was contrived, it was manufactured. Otherwise, you'll be calling on God himself to come and testify. But I won't go into the determination of someone's criminal liability or otherwise. I have not seen it with, with that kind of power. Okay. Lawyer, a person seen on tape doing what? What specific actions in that evidence did we expect governments to act on? Once again, let me state. Everything we gave to FIFA, we gave to government. There's something that FIFA did painstakingly, went through the evidence piece by piece. Beyond video evidence, there's also a person's handwriting. Beyond that, there, there are also numerous email messages coming from the supposed shake, the secretary of the supposed shake to the person of interest, coming from the person of interest to the other side. There are even threats of death, threats of harm on, on, on uh, phone conversations and all that. FIFA did 
uh, 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 an analytical job, went through the pieces uh, one by one to come to the determination they came to yesterday. You remember that first 30 days temporarily banned, and then they hadn't finished the process by which time they then extended it by 45 days. And then yesterday they came up to their, with their conclusions. They have found bribery and corruption. Then again, Mr. Jabing, FIFA was not carrying out a criminal prosecution process. No, no, and no, so no, the not. burden of uh, proof was not the same standard as governments will be required no, to. No, no, no. Once again, once again, you are, trying, you are trying to draw me into a determination of criminality. And I'm saying I'm not going to go there because I don't have that power. I'm only saying that it is that kind of evidence that was presented to the government institution. Uh, mind you, uh, they are still investigating. Let's be patient. They are still investigating. So for presented instance. to government for what purpose, Mr. Jabin? Several purposes. Wherever it goes to has its purpose. If it goes to financial uh, intelligence, it has its purpose. If it goes to uh, 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 economic and organized crime office, it has its purpose. Do, do, do you get it? If it goes to uh, the police CID, it has its purpose. So if you go into the financial intelligence, for instance, you know that it has to do with uh, issues of mo uh, money laundering. And again, and again, you have mentioned that, okay, you cannot, it is not your determination as to what a criminal standard is. But anyway, hold on, uh, lawyer. Uh, Samson Ladi is in the studio here with me. He has, he has one for you. Samson. Sina, right. good morning. Good morning, Samson. How is it? Right, I'm good. Now, um, the, the question that I think I, is coming up for us to answer uh, mm. will be that if you are presenting some uh, body of evidence to the Attorney General, mm -hmm. the Attorney General, of course, according to Article 88, is the, the state's you know, chief um, sure. uh, advisor and therefore mm -hmm. will, is the only one that mounts criminal prosecutions and even sure. for civil mm -hmm. on behalf mm -hmm. of the state. But the yeah. question is, you must have presented it to Ioko and the other entities for purposes of criminal prosecution. And then mm -hmm. if you did not have a conviction that mm -hmm. these cannot constitute or will not meet the, the, the standard of proving a crime, mm -hmm. then what would be the purpose? I mean, you, you, teach, you teach criminal law, so you would understand this a lot better. Mm. See, once again, let me just see. It is a conviction of the person who carried out the investigation. Look also from my point of view, and from our point of view, this has been committed, that has been committed. And so if the state institutions, in their wisdom, come to the conclusion that they will not go on that tangent, mind you, uh, so many uh, factors go into the determination of prosecution. You, you get it. Not just the evidence. Mm. The right. state might not even want to prosecute for reasons known to it. So uh, that's why I don't want to engage in that, in that, in that, in that, in that, in that kind of, in that kind of argument. So in, in, in simple terms, terms, in simple terms, terms, lawyer. Let, let me, let me, let me. Right, land, land, land. Let me finish the point. Land. The first point that Attorney General uh, 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 I mean, dismissed was uh, the charge of defrauding by false pretenses against him. You know, that came from the president's report to the police that his name has been mentioned somewhere and so uh, he should he should be arrested. That did not come from our, 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 our side. And even in, in my estimation, I did not think that defrauding by false pretenses was the way to go in, 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 that, in that sense. They, they, do you get it? Yes. So with, with all the facets that are available to the to the various state institutions, they should come out with the determination whether indeed uh, uh, the evidence is solid enough for them to go on or otherwise. So, lawyer, what did you think was the way to go? You mentioned that in your determination, in the determination of your client, you thought this has been committed, this has. What has been committed? Several things. There's bribery, there's corruption. I will give you two. The others I will hold for my purposes. In our laws, isn't bribery and corruption limited to public officials by our laws? Depends on how you are looking at it. It depends on how you are looking at it. How the should we look at it? The one who is engineering it and the one on whose behalf it is being engineered. Depends on how you look at it.
I, I, I have no intention to engage in a criminal law lecture this morning on radio, but it depends on how you look at it. It was being engineered and the purpose for which it was being done. And the aim and final object of the person who was engineering it. If you look at it critically, everything will fall into its right chips. What's of the question of jurisdiction, lawyer? Uh, the fact that this was committed in another country? What was recorded anyway? It is, you have concluded that it was uh, uh, committed in another country because the video was recorded in Dubai. But mind you, a company was set up in Ghana in pursuance of the meeting in Dubai. Seven days after, or ten days after the meeting, a company was set up here. And then uh, uh, accounts were set up here uh, in anticipation of receiving monies here in Ghana, all in pursuance of this enterprise. So you cannot just say because the video was recorded in Dubai, it was uh, perpetrated, whatever was perpetrated was perpetrated in a foreign, a foreign land. Emails were sent uh, from Ghana across borders all the way to the other side of, 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 of the Indian Ocean. Emails were sent from there here. It, it implicates the Ghanaian jurisdiction. In every sense, you look at it. Just, uh, you can't ring fence that video alone that was recorded in Dubai to say it was perpetrated in a foreign land. Indeed, most of the acts in pursuance of that enterprise were done in this jurisdiction. Thank you, lawyer Kisi Ejabin, for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Kisi Ejabin is lawyer for Anas Arime Yawanas, uh, Samson Lade Ayenin is private legal practitioner. Uh, we were having a conversation about the legal implications of the number 12 documentary and our expectations of government. I know that for anyone listening who watched the documentary, you'd expect that Charlie Heads must roll by now. Why have they not rolled? We have sought to try and answer these questions succinctly. And the word from both parties is, look, we had expectations in terms of charges to be leveled against Mr. Anas Arime Yawanas. In our opinion, we have enough to nail Mr. Nasser Mianas. But ultimately, government has to investigate. Government has to determine. We're going to take these important messages and there's a lot more that we're going to talk about with Samson because in the past, in this year that we are in, we've seen 11 journalists being brutalized, being abused physically, one for every month. Unfortunately, five of these journalists have been my colleagues here at the multimedia group across the country. So the question we are asking ourselves, why should going to work present physical harm to ourselves? And most critically, what has been done about these other 11 cases, both from us as an organization, from the state, how have those efforts been frustrated or challenged if they have? If you have any of those questions, you can send them in on 0244 340437 and at Joy 997 FM on Twitter, Joy 99.7 FM on Facebook. Also coming up shortly on the Super Morning Show. When we have 29.6 million people having to share 55 ambulances, what would you say if you saw 30 ambulances sitting down that we have spent 2.4 million euros on, which are not in use? Whose fault is it? Who has caused it? Politics or corruption? Stay with us. We'll answer those questions. Me pa kaunta mami sister disikegu.